Well, hello and welcome to another hardcore Nuzlocke. Today, I want to take a trip back to Hoenn and attempt a run using only flying types. There are quite a few flying types that we can encounter in this region. Some of them really good. Unfortunately, some of them we can't get until the post game. Flying does have a couple of glaring weaknesses to rock and electric. Though, our run through this region should be pretty good. There is a gym leader that I have to prepare for immediately, and you guys should know who it is. We're going to get set up, we're going to do all of the tutorial stuff, and let's just get rolling with this run. NS the Wingle has a serious neutral nature. Nimbo Stratus joins the team as our starter. CI the Talo has a hardy neutral nature, so Sirius is the second member of our team. Stratus joins the team with a lax plus defense minus special defense nature. We do need to evolve this thing. And can you guys guess the name theme in the comments section below? Cumulus is the next member of the team. It has a naughty plus attack minus special defense nature. And unfortunately, this won't evolve into a beastly ninjask until much later. First gym leader Roxanne is going to be a bit of a struggle. Wingle should easily be able to take out the Geodudes. I've beaten her with a Beautifly before, so I know that they are quad weak to grass and water, and Beautifly does have Absorb. I did edge Wingle and Beautifly close to level 16 because the level caps start at the start of the battle, or end at the start of the battle, rather. I know a single Water Gun will take out the first Geodude, and I know a second Water Gun will take out the second Geodude. However, when Nose Pass comes out, things are going to be vastly different. It is only one times weak or two times weak to water and grass. It's a bit more bulky and it has some moves to counteract us. And Rock Tomb is super effective. So our first goal is to hit it with Super Sonic, which of course misses on the first turn. But of course, Nose Pass just goes for Harden, which is really weird. I do go for a Super Sonic the second turn and it hits. And surprisingly, Nose Pass hits itself in confusion. My plan then is to start going for Growl to lower its attack so we can survive more hits. Of course, after my first Growl, it snaps out of confusion and hits us with a Rock Tomb. I go for Supersonic again because Supersonic will help us hopefully live longer. We get another Rock Tomb hit and we finally get a Growl off. A third Rock Tomb drops us very low into red health, but a Held Orin Berry does cure up some health. With the couple of Growls that we have, we should be able to survive a couple more hits. We do hit it with a Nasty Water Gun to about half health, and it hits itself in confusion, activating its own Orin Berry. I think there wasn't a way around that. I do get off a Wing Attack. I don't want to drop this thing low enough to where Roxanne starts using her potions, and he snaps out of confusion. She, rather, snaps out of confusion. We have a Rock Tomb miss, and we hit with a Super Sonic. Nose Pass then hurts itself in confusion. We hit it with another Wing Attack. It hurts itself in confusion again, and I think we can get the KO with Water Gun at this point. We click Water Gun, and it KOs the Nose Pass. It was a crit, but I don't think that matters. Walking out of this battle unscathed is very nice. We have a couple more encounters. It is SC the Zubat with a Jolly plus speed minus special attack nature. That's not great, but I'll take it. And then we have CB the Magikarp with a docile neutral nature. That's perfect for future Gyarados. Going up against Brawly with some flying types is going to be relatively easy. I did take the non-flying types off the team for the fight, and the plan is simple. We're going to use CI here. It has the ability Guts, so we pre-poisoned it off of a Wild Tentacool. And we're just going to click Wing Attack, and these things are going to go away. I think we could do this without the Guts boost, but the Guts boost is going to guarantee that all three of these Pokemon go down. Machop is a one-shot. Metatite comes out, and it does tighten its focus to use Focus Punch. We, of course, are getting hurt by our poison throughout, but we take it out with a single Wing Attack. Out comes Makuhita, the bulkiest of the boys. And we get hurt by poison, and we click wing attack and one-shot the Makuita. A very easy battle. It's nice to have an easy battle, but what's coming next is not easy. The plan for Watson is to lose as little Pokemon as possible, and hopefully we win. 
I lead with CB because we need experience to get us to level 25. I'm not over the level cap just yet, but at level 25 we learn Dragon Rage. And that's about the only thing that we have to answer Magneton. I do swap immediately to NS for a sacrifice because we need a safe switch in. And I'm sorry, NS, you were invaluable in the Roxanne battle, but unfortunately your time on the team has come to an end. Your sacrifice is not in vain and you will be remembered. I swap in ST that I did some EV training on in the special attack side of things. Voltorb outspeeds us for a spark to knock us to 22 HP, and we retaliate with a very strong psychic, but it doesn't KO. He outspeeds us once again with Shockwave to KO, and I decide to swap in CU. CU is pretty fast, and fortunately, it outspeeds the Voltorb and KOs it with a cut. My plan for the Manetric, the Electric, is to build up some Fury Cutters and do some serious damage. Out comes Electric and our first Fury Cutter hits, and of course we get static, paralyzed. Why wouldn't we? Electric goes for Howl. We break through Paralysis and hit a Fury Cutter on the second turn. Electric just goes for Howl. The speed boost that Ninkata is getting here, or Ninjask rather, is very, very helpful because we outspeed and break through paralysis on the third time to hit a Fury Cutter and KO the Electric. Out comes Manetric. We do outspeed, we do break through paralysis, and we hit a Fury Cutter to half. Unfortunately, a Shockwave KOs us. My decision here is to swap in Swallow CI to KO it with a Quick Attack, but a Citrus Berry activates that I completely forgot about. Crap. Quick attack takes it back below half health and a shock wave KOs it. That is four out of six Pokemon gone. My next step is to swap CB in thinking that we will outspeed but we don't and we get hit with a shock wave. Goodbye CB. Oh my god, he survived on 1 HP. Oh, Dragon Rage hits, Dragon Rage KOs. Holy crap. We might outspeed the Magneton. We do outspeed the Magneton to hit it with a Dragon Rage that gets it lower than half. That'll give SC some time to do something, but Magneton just goes for Thunder Wave. We have an equipped Cherry Berry. Oh my god, on 1 HP, we win. And we have two Pokemon left. <laughs> the team made it through. Wow. We can then capture AS the Skarmory here that has a bold plus defense minus attack nature. That's not great, but a welcome addition to the team nonetheless. After that, we can get CC the Swablu here. It has a serious neutral nature. I'm getting a lot of neutral natures this run, but that's great. And the team is slowly building. Now against Flannery, there's not much that she can do to my team. She is a fire type trainer and I have CB the Gyarados who is a water type so we resist all of her moves. There's also quite a bit of storyline stuff that you can do including getting the meteorite off of Mount Chimney. You can take that meteorite back to Fall Arbor Town and trade it for the TM for return. Gyarados is definitely at full friendship because we evolved our Golbat into Crobat, so we click return and we one-shot the Numel. Very, very nice. This is the plan. It's a strong physical type move, and Gyarados is a strong physical attacker. Slugma comes out, we use return, and we one-shot the Slugma, albeit it was a critical hit. I don't think that crit mattered. Next for Flannery is going to be her Camerupt, and no, none of these Pokemon are going to use their Fire-type moves, which is really nice. We click Return, and Camerupt is a bit more bulky because Return doesn't KO it. However, it just retaliates with a weak tackle, so we click Return one final time, and Camerupt goes down. That is three of her four Pokemon. It is nice to have a gym battle. That we can kind of breeze through because Watson was extremely stressful. Her Torkoal, we could swap Gyarados out, swap it back in to get rid of the white herb that it holds. But I'm just deciding to go on the offensive and return does about a third. Torkoal sets up Sunny Day. 
which really doesn't matter for us. We're not going for a water type move. We don't have one. I decided to switch to Dragon Rage because I don't think Return is going to be doing enough damage and Dragon Rage does do more damage and we get hit with a Body Slam and we don't get paralyzed, which is very nice. <laughs> Flannery does use a Hyper Potion. To heal it back up, we go for Dragon Rage that takes it just above half. So I'm going to go for another Return that takes it back down to about a quarter health. As we get hit with another body slam, we do still have some gas in the tank as Flannery goes for its second hyper potion. I decide to use return, taking it down to about a third. And from this point forward, we're going to get hit with another body slam, which is fine as we use Dragon Rage to take it down to a quarter. One more body slam down to 26 HP and a final Dragon Rage to take out the Torkoal. That thing is a beast. Now as we travel back and forth, there's a lot of travel to get to Norman. There, we can start thinking about the team and the remaining encounters that we have. There are three more encounters that we can get. One of them is right before Winona. One of them is slightly after Winona, and then the last encounter is not going to be until after we beat the 8th and final gym leader. So this is the team going forward. Tropius will be the next Pokemon that we can find, and I don't think it's a good answer into Winona's flying types, so this is the team to beat both Norman and Winona. The plan into Norman is very simple. We have a strong steel type against his normal type Pokemon. The only one of his team that has any moves that can do any damage to us is Slacking with Counter, and we can actually work around that very easily. We did teach AS the Steel Wing TM we got from Steven Stone in Granite Cave. It has low accuracy, but it is a stab move, and it does about half, a little over half, to Spinda. Spinda retaliates with a very weak Psybeam, doing 6 HP of damage. A second Steel Wing connects and KOs the Spinda. Next up is Vigoroth, who's very, very fast, and we click Steel Wing, and it outspeeds us to hit us with a pretty weak slash. Steel Wing connects, and looks like it's doing a little over a third of its health. We did get the defense boost, which is really nice. Vigoroth retaliates with a weak feint attack, doing only 5 HP of damage, and we hit it with a second Steel Wing. This Steel Wing dropped it low enough to where Norman decides to use a Hyper Potion and we hit it with another Steel Wing once again for a third. I decide at this point that I'm not going to be outsped. Vigoroth uses Faint Attack, doing very little damage, and I use Agility. One Agility was enough to get us to outspeed the Vigoroth. The next turn we click Steel Wing and we drop this thing into Red Health and we get hit with Faint Attack. The next turn, we do get plagued by the fact that Steel Wing misses and we get hit with another Faint Attack. No big deal, Faint Attacks aren't doing much. We click Steel Wing, this time it connects and we KO the Vigoroth. Out comes Lanoon. Lanoon does have Belly Drum, so I am a little bit nervous for that, but I go for Steel Wing and it does right at half health. And Lanoon just goes for a slash, which crits, but still doesn't do a lot of damage. We click Steel Wing one more time, and it does get the favorable range and KOs the Lanoon. Very nice. Now, as Slacking comes out, it has an attacking turn and a loafing turn. On its attacking turn, if we don't attack, it can't use counter, so I go for Sand Attack, and of course, Slacking goes for counter. Misses. On its loafing turn, I decide to go for Steel Wing, and it's not doing that much damage. That's a fifth, maybe? I go for another Sand Attack on the next attacking turn, and this time Slacking throws a wrench in the plan, going for Yawn. I do not want to deal with Sleep, so I swap immediately into CB. We do get the Intimidate on Slacking, which is really nice. It knows Facade which isn't going to do much because we're not going to do a status condition to it. Um, we're just going to go for Dragon Rage, which puts this thing right at about half health. Facade misses. I'm debating on what I want to do here. I was going to go for Return, but I think Dragon Rage is the better play because we can't get a counter off of a set damage move like Dragon Rage. 
We drop it to yellow health and its citrus berry activates, bringing it back up just below half health. I go for another Dragon Rage, dropping it into red health, and I forgot that Norman does have one more Hyper Potion, so he heals his slacking. Oh, just... <laughs> You're postponing the inevitable, my friend. Another Dragon Rage does about a, a quarter? A little over a quarter. I decide to see what Return is going to do, and it, we get a crit to red health. Slacking finally hits us with a facade at 234 HP, and one more return is enough to take out the slacking, winning us the fifth gym battle. Right before Four Tree City, we get AC the Tropius that has a hardy neutral nature. Again, this encounter is not going to be great into Winona's flying types, but it is nice to round out the team with another encounter. For the Winona battle, I don't have a huge strategy. We're just leading with CB and hoping it can do as much destruction as it can. Gyarados is a beast of a Pokemon, and it's why a lot of people don't use it in Nuzlocke's. But this thing has been invaluable. We do have Return, just like in the last fight. So I'm going to use Return against Swablu, who's a physically frail and it looks like a single return is enough to take out the Swablu. Out next for Winona is her Tropius. Tropius likes to set up Sunny Day to outspeed you and then try to slow you down with some synthesis techniques. We click return and it does a little over half damage and instead of all of that Tropius decides to go for Solar Beam. Okay so another return is going to take it out getting us the first two KOs without taking a hit point of damage, which is really nice. Out next is Pelipper, and you know this thing is annoying. It likes to go for Protect, but it doesn't go for Protect on the first turn. So we get off a return that does well over half damage, and Pelipper was just going for Supersonic, which misses. There's the Protect that we all know and love, so we miss our next return. But a third return connects and takes out the Pelipper. Ha! Huh. That was a very... Very crazy battle. Normally these things don't go this way. I'm, I'm sitting here kerfuffled on my voiceover because I remember this battle being very, very weird. Out comes Skarmory and we go for a Dragon Rage, which doesn't quite do half health and we get hit with an annoying sand attack. I don't want to deal with accuracy loss, so I decide to swap into SC. SC hasn't gotten a lot of screen time in the major battles, but this thing has been a beast off camera, taking out a lot of different Pokemon. We get hit with an Aerial Ace on the swap in, and we go for Confuse Ray. My plan is to do a little bit of chip damage and bring CB back in to KO this thing with another Dragon Rage before Winona heals. Skarmory is confused, and it breaks through, but it misses a Steel Wing. I decide to go for a fairly weak bite, which does... Enough damage, I think maybe one more bite will do it. Fortunately, Skarmory hurts itself in confusion, so I don't need to do another bite. Let's just swap in Gyarados. Gyarados comes out. Skarmory is confused, and it uses Steel Wing, which connects, doing very little damage. We go for Dragon Rage, and that is just enough to KO the Skarmory. Little bit annoying, but we managed to get to Altaria. Altaria is scary. We use Return against the Altaria. The animation for this thing is so long. <laughs> and it doesn't quite do half. Altaria goes for Dragon Dance though. Boosting its attack and boosting its speed. That's not good. Altaria goes for Aerial Ace and it does a lot of damage. Bite knocks this thing down to a favorable range. But a held Cit Orin Berry. Almost said Citrus Berry does take it back up above half health. Altaria goes for another Dragon Dance as we go for another Bite. The Bite once again takes this thing low enough with a crit. Altaria hits us with another Aerial Ace, and if that had been a crit, we would have lost CB here, but we go unpunished and take this thing out with one final return. Our next encounter is found in the Safari Zone, but to get to the Safari Zone, you've got to first come to Lily Cove, and then come south of the Pokemon Center and come in here to get the Pokeblock case. I believe that you can make Pokeblocks and entice certain Pokemon to come and, and battle you or something. I'm not 100% sure, but we have to have this case to get in the Safari Zone. The Safari Zone is our next encounter. And there are actually 
a handful of encounters that we can get there. We can get Doduo, we can get Hoot Hoot, Ladyba, Gliger, and Natu. I really wish we could have got Gliger a lot sooner. Three of those five encounters, however, are post-game encounters, and we can't get them until we've beaten the Elite Four. Immediately inside the Safari Zone, this patch of grass right here will net us a Doduo. We know this from when we were getting sharp beaks a couple of episodes ago. If you get on the bike and roll around this edge right here, after you beat the Elite Four, these trainers or these roadblocks will be out of the way and there is a Gliger on the other side that we can get. I would love to have that as an encounter, but unfortunately we can't get it at the moment. If you hop across here and go to where we got the Heracross in a previous run, we can get ourselves an encounter here that is Natu. That is my choice, Doduo or Natu. Which do we pick? I decided to go for Natu. CS here has a quirky neutral nature. This is going to be a decent Pokemon on the team. I thought having a psychic flying type as opposed to a normal flying type would be better. I've never used this thing and I will be able to play with a Doduo in a future run. After defeating Winona in Fortry City, there is an amazing amount of gameplay left before we can get to Moss Deep City, which holds the next gym leaders, Tate and Liza. I'm not looking forward to the fight with them, I think we're going to be able to beat it relatively easy, but we have struggled in the past. What I'm talking about is after we beat the 6th gym leader, to get to the 7th gym leader, there is an insane amount of gameplay. We have to go to Lily Cove. We have to go to Mount Pyre. You can go to Mount Pyre first. I just like getting to Lily Cove so that we have a fly point, and Lily Cove is not far off of where Mount Pyre is. After Mount Pyre, you have to go to the Jagged Path and do all of the Magma Hideout stuff. After the Magma Hideout stuff, you have to head to Slateport City, do a little bit of stuff there with Team Aqua, and then come back to Lily Cove City to this location right here, which is the Aqua Hideout, and defeat everybody here. And then Archie and his goons will head off in the submarine, and that will finally open up the roadblock that will get you to Moss Deep City. Doesn't seem like a lot, but when we do a Fire Red run versus an Emerald run, there's about a 10 hour difference. It takes us that much longer to beat Emerald as opposed to Fire Red. There's a lot of gameplay in Fire Red too, but between Erica, Koga, and Sabrina, there's it's all really close. It's not spread out like it is in this game. After we beat Tate and Liza, then we have to do the, the rocket building where they're making the rocket fuel and we have to beat Team Magma again. We have to find the underground cavern and defeat all of Team Aqua and go up against Archie one final time. Then we have to go find Sutopolis City. Then we have to go to the Cave of Origin and talk to Wallace. We then have to go all the way to the uh, Sky Pillar, Rayquaza stuff, get back to Sutopolis. I do like to go to Pacifla Dog just to have a fly point there as well. You can get another uh, return TM there. Then after all that is said and done, you have to talk to Archie and Maxi. You have to talk to Wallace, and then you can finally go take on the eighth and final gym, Juan. The strategy for Tate and Lizer to lead with CB and CC. CB knows Surf, CC knows Ice Beam, and all of these Pokemon are weak to water except for Zatu and all of them are weak to ice making this a pretty nice battle. We could have gone in and got the never melt ice. I didn't grab that item but it is no big deal. I do have to watch swapping in AC and AS as Soul Rock has flamethrower and Zatu likes to set up the sun. I decided to go for a surf ice beam combo against these Pokemon. Surf does quite a bit of damage to Claydol and it actually crits against the Zatu which is super nice. Zatu goes for Calm Mind, and CC gets a crit of her own, KOing the Clay Doll with Ice Beam. Nice. Out comes Lunatone. So I decide to go for a return against a Zatu because of the Calm Mind, and I'm debating if I want to use an Ice Beam against the Lunatone, but I'm worried that we won't KO the Zatu with re return. So I click Ice Beam on Zatu as well, and it was a good thing I did because Return leaves it with a sliver of health as Zatu sets up the sun. Ice Beam takes out the Zatu, and out comes Soul Rock. 
we're doing really good. The sun does change my plans, so I start using Bite Ice Beam combo against Lunatone. Bite does quite a bit of damage, and Ice Beam puts this thing at about half health. That's pretty nice, and what's crazy is we get the flinch off of Bite. Soul Rock goes for Psychic against CC, and it does about a quarter of its health. Again, we go Bite Ice Beam combo, but this time we get less favorable ranges, and it puts it deep into the red, but it gets another flinch. Soul Rock once again goes for Psychic against a CC, and the Citrus Berry of Lunatone actually pulls it out of healing range, which is super nice. I then decide to go for Return Ice Beam because I think Return is going to do a bit more damage than Bite. Our special attack is weak. And we put that thing on a sliver of health, but the subsequent Ice Beam takes it out. Now it is a 2v1. We do get hit with another Psychic, bringing us to 30 HP. We're going to need to swap this thing out. I decide to go for Dragon Rage against the Soul Rock, and I swap in AC. That was kind of a misclick on my part. I'm worried about Soul Rock using Flamethrower. It does hit AC with a Psychic on the switch. And Dragon Rage does a third. I decide that AC is not a good Pokemon to have in, and I swap it out for Zatu. We hit Soul Rock with another Dragon Rage, dropping it below half health. And Soul Rock just goes for Sunny Day instead of Flamethrower. I could have left AC in. Alright, that's how it's gonna be. On the last turn here, we are going to go for a Dragon Rage and Nightshade combo because the Citrus Berry pulls this thing just above half health. I'm hoping it is just enough to where Tate and Liza don't use one of their Hyper Potions. Dragon Rage drops this thing very, very low, and Nightshade is enough to KO it, winning us the fight. After some travel, we get to Juan, and my strategy for Juan is we're going to set up on Love Disc and sweep his team. AC knows Magical Leaf, Solar Beam, Growth, and Sunny Day. This should be relatively easy. I didn't equip the Person Berry on AC here. I should have. Love Disc is going to go for Water Pulse while we're setting up Growth. But surprisingly, we don't get confused off of the first four Water Pulses as we're setting up Growth and keeping the Sun up. It's not until the fifth Growth that Love Disc decides to swap up from Water Pulse and use a Sweet Kiss, which does confuse us. We break through Confusion and get a 6th Growth off. We manage to break through Confusion and get a Sunny Day up. And when we finally decide to go for Solar Beam is when we hit ourselves in Confusion. <laughs> of course we do. The Sunlight is still up. I decide to go for another Solar Beam, and luckily for us, we snap out of Confusion, and Solar Beam one-shots the Love Disk as we knew it would. The reason I did all of this setup is I wasn't sure if we could take out the Celio, who comes out next. We are quad weak to Ice. We click Solar Beam, and Celio does fortunately go down to a single Solar Beam. Another Pokemon I wasn't sure if it would go down in a single hit is Kingdra, who comes out next. We click Solar Beam. This thing does take neutral damage from Solar Beam being Water Dragon, but 6 Gross is enough to take it out. Out comes Whizcash, and Whizcash comes out just as the sun fades. Instead of going for Sunny Day, I decide to go for Magical Leaf. Whizcash just sets up the rain, and Magical Leaf is enough to one-shot the Whizcash because it is quad weak to grass. Last but not least is Crawdont. The rain is out, but we do outspeed it to take it out with a Magical Leaf, winning us the 8th and final gym. After that, we make our way back to Meteor Falls to get our last encounter. Lenticular here has a quirky neutral nature. This is going to replace CS on the team for sure. As a matter of fact, we leveled this thing up, the bag on to level 49, so it learns Dragon Claw. We taught it some TMs to give it a bunch of different coverage moves, and I wanted to show off the Wally battle because against a Pokemon like Altaria, we can easily just use Dragon Claw, one-shotting the Altaria. It was a critical hit. Out comes Delcaddy, but we have Brick Break to take that out. Out next is Magneton. We did teach Flamethrower. 
Flamethrower is enough to one-shot the Magneton. Out comes Rosalia, and it suffers the, the same fate with Flamethrower. And last for Wally is Gardevoir. Luckily, there's no fairy typing in this game. However, Crunch is not quite enough to take it out, so we have to sit and watch it click Future Sight. And one more Crunch defeats Wally. This is why I don't show these battles. Before we get into the Elite Four or do anything else, I would like to take a moment and just remember the Fallen. Your sacrifices got us to the Elite Four. With the team that we have assembled, your sacrifices made this run possible, and I thank you all, and I wish you could join us in the endeavor. So here is the team before the Elite Four. We have AS, the Skarmory with Steel Wings, Spikes, Agility, and Aerial Ace. We have AC, the Tropius with Synthesis, Growth, Solar Beam, and Sunny Day. I'm going to need to use the PowerPoint Max and the PowerPoint Up on that thing. We have CB, the Gyarados with Return, Earthquake, Surf, and Dragon Dance. Lenticular, the Salamence with Crunch, Brick Break, Dragon Claw, and Flamethrower. CC, the Altaria with Dragon Rage, Dragon Claw, Ice Beam, Refresh, and Perish Song. And last but not least is SC, the Crobat with Poison Fang, Confuse Ray, Shadow Ball, and Wing Attack. I decided not to bring Natu with us because it is week to three of the four Elite Four members. It's weak to Dark, it's weak to Ghost, and it is weak to Ice. I don't think it has a place on the team. I'm hoping this team, with some strategy, will be enough to beat the Elite Four. But enough talking, let's go find out. My plan for Sydney here is to lead with AS. It's going to soak up the Intimidate from Mighty Ina. And it, Mighty Ina can't actually do a lot of damage to a Steel-type Pokemon. I'm going to set up a couple of layers of spikes. I'm scouting what Mighty Ian is going to use for moves, and it's going exactly what I thought it would do, which is Sand Attack. It's not going to go for Sand Attack after the Keen Eye ability. It does hit us with a Crunch. Nice, we've baited that move out. A couple layers of spikes, and now we can swap into Lenticular on a Crunch. And now we can Brick Break the entire team. Mighty Ina goes down to a single Brick Break. Absol goes down to a single Brick Break. Shiftry goes down to a single Brick Break. Cacturn goes down to a single Brick Break. And last but not least is Crawdont, who also goes down to a single Brick Break. I didn't think Phoebe would be as big of a pain as she is, but just watch. We lead with SC because we taunt at Shadow Ball. Dusclops, of course, goes for Protect, so we miss. On the second round, we go for Shadow Ball, and it hits, doing well over half damage, and we get hit with a Shadow Punch. A Shadow Ball on the next turn KOs the Dusclops, and out comes Bayonet. This is where things start going sideways. We use a Shadow Ball, knocking Bayonet deep into the red, and it gets off a very strong Psychic, doing significant damage to SC. Phoebe then goes for a full restore, and we hit a Wing Attack. A Shadow Ball on the next turn KOs the Bayonet and out clums her second Dusclops that knows so many type coverage moves, it's insane. I decide to swap in Lenticular and we swap into a Rock Slide that does a little bit of damage and we get off a fairly nasty crunch dropping Dusclops below half health. It hits us with a very strong Ice Beam and what I forgot about was the Citrus Berry that activates, pulling this thing just out of range for us to KO it with another Crunch, so I need to swap in to something. I decide to swap in AS because I know it's going to go for Ice Beam, and Ice Beam is neutral. I then miss Steel Wing three times in a row. Mm -hmm. We could have KO'd this thing. We connect with a Steel Wing finally. It does significant damage. And it hits us with an Ice Beam to 30 HP. So I've got to swap. I decide to swap in Gyarados because it's the only other thing that takes neutral damage from Ice Beam. We swap into an Ice Beam and we get frozen on the next turn. Can you... Hmm. I can tank a couple of Ice Beams, so I stay in and go for Earthquake, and we defrost immediately. Oh my god, at least luck finally came around. We KO the Dusclops. Out comes the second Bayonet. 
we hit Earthquake, it doesn't quite KO it. It hits us with a weak Shadow Ball. A second K Earthquake does KO. Sableye is the exact same thing. It comes in, we hit it with an Earthquake. It doesn't quite KO. It uses Shadow Ball for fairly weak damage, and we KO it with a final Earthquake. My goodness. The only strategy I see going up against Glacia is to lead with CB, use a few Dragon Dances, and then hopefully sweep the team with Return. The first Dragon Rage is a freebie because Celio likes to set up the Hail. After that, Celio is going to go for Body Slam, so provided we can avoid a Paralysis, this should work. We set up a second Dragon Dance, Celio hits us with a Body Slam, it doesn't paralyze. We set up a third Dragon Dance and Celio hits us with a Body Slam, that doesn't paralyze. Very nice. Return then one-shots the Celio. The Paralysis would make it to where we're outsped and the chip damage from Hail would make it to where we wouldn't last through all of the Pokemon. We outspeed the Glalie and one-shot it with a Return. We outspeed the second Celio and one-shot it with Return. We outspeed the second Glalie and one-shot it with Return. And last but not least is Walrein, who is fairly bulky. Was three Dragon Dances enough to one-shot this thing with Return? Yes! Yes, it was. Nice. The Drake battle goes... Meh. I lead with Altaria because I think it can do more damage against the Shogun with Dragon Claw versus Ice Beam. And I think we can KO the Altaria and the Flygon with Ice Beam. Shogun protects on the first turn, but the second turn we get a Dragon Claw that one-shots the Shogun and out comes Altaria. I go for Ice Beam and surprisingly it doesn't KO it, but puts it deep in the red. Altaria goes for Dragon Dance. Drake is going to heal with the full restore on the next turn, and a subsequent Ice Beam once again drops this thing into red health. I thought maybe it was a range, it doesn't look like it. Altaria then just goes for Double Edge, knocking itself out with recoil damage. Interesting, I'm surprised it didn't use Dragon Breath. Out comes Flygon. I think we have enough health to tank a Dragon Breath. And we do. Excellent. And a single Ice Beam is enough to one-shot the Flygon. Out comes Salamence. We soak up the Intimidate with CC. And this is where we decide to swap in AC on a Dragon Claw. We're going to tank that very well. We're baiting Flamethrower, so we swap into SC. We do get hit with a Flamethrower on the swap in. And I'm hoping we can get a Confuse Ray off, which we do. Salamence, however, breaks through Confuse Ray and hits us with Rock Slide, dropping us down to 12 HP. Oh my goodness. I then decide to swap into Lenticular. We swap in, get the Intimidate off, and Salamence does hurt itself in Confusion. And then I misclick and hit Crunch. Oh, if I would have hit Dragon Claw, we'd have won. Oh, Salamence then snaps out of Confusion and hits us with a nasty Dragon Claw, dropping us to 36 HP. Luckily for us, we do outspeed and take out the Salamence with a subsequent Dragon Claw. Last but not least is Kingdra. I immediately swap. I swap into AS on a Body Slam and go for Steel Wing. Steel Wing does pitiful damage and Kingdra is going for Dragon Dance. So I swap into CB, hoping that we can get an Intimidate off to help us out and... She just goes for Dragon Dance, so the Intimidate doesn't matter, but her speed rose, hits us with a Body Slam, and of course, paralyzes us. I do get off a return, however, taking it low into the yellow health, she gets off another Body Slam, and a return KOs the Kingdra. Waylord is a pretty scary Pokemon. I'm leading with CB because it's the only thing that takes neutral damage from Ice Moves outside of AS. This also has Water Spout, which is based off of its HP, so I'm going to hit it with a return immediately, hoping we do significant damage. I don't think it's going to go for Water Spout, but it also has Body Slam and Rain Dance. It does look like Waylord's going for Blizzard, and it does look like Return was not two-shot, so I'm going to go for a single Dragon Dance. It goes for another Blizzard that connects, taking us to 85 HP. But a second return does KO the Wailord. Very nice. Out comes Tentacruel. 
Tentacruel can easily go down to an Earthquake. One single Earthquake does take it out. That thing likes to use Toxic, I'm not too worried about it. Out comes Melodic, and the same thing, Melodic likes to go for Toxic and then stall you out with Recover. We hit it with a Return, which drops it very low into the Yellow Health, and it hits us with an Ice Beam, dropping us to 39 HP. Citrus Berry then activates, but it's not enough to pull it too far to where a second return does KO this thing, and out comes Ludicolo. We're very low on health, I decide to swap into AS because we taught it Aerial Ace. Ludicolo goes for double team like I knew it would. We go for Aerial Ace the next turn, and Ludicolo decides to Leech Seed us. Mm. Stall tactics are a pain. I go for Aerial Ace again, and it is just enough to KO the Ludicolo. I can't believe we've made it this far. Two more Pokemon left. Out comes Whizcash. And as we get sapped from a Leech Seed, I decide to stay in and use Spikes. Which is a stupid move because it doesn't affect Gyarados. Whizcash then goes for Amnesia, kind of killing my plan. I do swap into SC. I should have swapped Atropius in. We get hit with a Surf on the swap and go for Confuse Ray. Whizcash hurts itself in confusion, and I decide to get Lenticular out there and start hitting it with some Brick Breaks as it goes for Amnesia. We go back and forth, Brick Break, Surf, Brick Break, Surf, Crunch, Brick Break, to the point where Wallace does use a Full Restore, and at that point I decide to swap into a S who gets hit with a Surf, and I immediately swap back into a C who gets hit with a Surf just to set up the Sun to weaken Surf's power. We swap back into Lenticular on another Surf, and we start going for Brick Breaks once again, tanking the Surfs until we're at 34 HP, which I swap into AC on a Hyper Beam that does, eh, damage. I go for Solar Beam, and I should have just done this in the first place, because even at about half health, Solar Beam was enough to KO it, even with the Amnesias. Last but not least is Gyarados, who comes out and hits us with a Hyper Beam AC, had to go down, there was no way I could swap anything into it. I then decide to swap in CC, and the ultimate strategy is at hand. Gyarados has to recharge, and I get off a Parish Song. This thing has three turns to live. Gyarados goes for Dragon Dance as I go for a Dragon Claw, doing minuscule amount of damage. I could probably kill that thing in four shots. I then decide to swap into SC. To get rid of my Parish Song counter, Gyarados goes for Surf that doesn't do much, and his counter goes down to 1. I swap CC back in on a Surf that doesn't do much, and Parish Song takes out the Gyarados, winning us the champion battle. Winning us the run. Well, that run was a ton of fun. I like playing Emerald, though it is a very long run anytime we decide to do one. Flying types actually weren't that bad. I'm very surprised. I'm very happy with the team. AC sacrifice at the end. I'm not even going to count it. We did this thing <laughs> with some minimal deaths. Made it all the way. Gyarados, once again, is a beast of a Pokemon. And the setup strats on Glacia was the only way to win. Of course, I didn't want to do that against Wallace. Um, Crobat didn't get a lot of playtime in the major battles. But it did help me out throughout a lot of different trainer battles. And the rest of the team, I don't even know who the MVP is. The name theme of this, if you hadn't guessed it, is Type of Clouds. We have Sirius, Serial Cumulus, Serial Stratus, Alto Stratus, Stratus, Alto Cumulus, Stratus, Strato Cumulus, Cumulus, Nimbo Stratus, Kilio Nimbus, and Lenticular. Lenticular is actually a cloud formation over a mountain. So if you guess that, you win nothing? I, I, I'm still waiting on a ring. You guys, nothing, nothing, no ring, no, no engagement. I don't, I don't know. But I think next time we are going to finish our Gen 4 run through Kanto using the normal types in Heart Gold. Then after that, I've got a Fire Red run planned out. I think it's going to be super fun. And then we'll go from there. If you've made it this far in the run and you want to see something in particular, let me know. 
I did just kind of jump into this run and, and hit it as fast as we could. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, you know the routine. Like, comment, subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you on the next one.